Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be making a custom part here. We're going to try to duplicate this broken plastic piece, model it in CAD so that we can 3D print it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here, or let me explain this, what this part is. So this is a plastic piece that holds this little um, metal bar here. It goes on the top of a uh, Easy Up or pop-up canopy. Um, it holds part of the um, fabric taut. So it snapped off in a windstorm. And as you can see here, the piece itself is just completely sheared at this joint <clears throat> and cracked on this side. So we have most of the part intact still, so we're going to be able to model off of it, I think. Um, but obviously this is not going to hold anything anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and take the screw out and so that we can go ahead and get this guy modeled up here. Okay, so we got that loose. Let's go ahead and take the screw all the way out. Okay, so this is the part free of the little bar. So as you can see, we've got a kind of U clamp that gets a nut and bolt through. Um, and then we've got an angled piece here with a slot or shaft um, for this bar to seat in like that okay so the first thing that I usually do when I'm doing something like this is I just kind of trace it out in multiple um, configurations on this piece of paper so the first one I'll do is just the kind of bottom view here Sometimes you gotta get a little creative there. And then you know, this piece is inside there. Can't quite make that pencil fit though. Let's see, can we get in there? Barely, there it is. So somewhere in there. This doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get the rough shapes, right? And then I'll go ahead and lay it on its side. that and this is this whole the whole purpose of this drawing is just so that we have um, something to dimension onto because we're going to take actual dimensions of this with caliper and ruler and stuff okay and then that's that we might go ahead and flip it like this now This side is a little bit lacking. Kind of fill in the gaps a little bit there. And then something else I want to do is put it upside down so we can get the top portion here. smaller pencil would have been advisable for this but this one will work okay and then so we got the height we've got the width captured we've got the top or the bottom face we've got what we have of the top face here um, and then you know we need to note that there's a circle inside of here, right? And we'll get that dimension. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually dimension it. I've got my caliper here. Turn that guy on, zeroed out. Just gonna start taking some dimensions. So 
A, and then these individual legs here, 2.37 looks like, 2.39, I'm going to call it 2.4. of this circle here 9.94 I'm going to go ahead and round that up to 10 so diameter of circle 10 This front nose diameter is 2 point, I'm going to go 2.25 for that. Honestly, I think I'm just going to keep this at 2.4 all the way around. It seems like it'll be a little stronger, and I can't imagine that that's going to hurt the use of it. So we're just going to keep this 2.4 as well. Okay, we'll do this guy here, front to back. Fifteen point. Keep sliding off there. It's about fifteen point eight. Okay, there is actually no circle on the top piece. Let's go ahead and measure how deep that circle is, or that uh, slot is, rather. So from the outer edge, we're about 23.5. So there's a slot here, right? And from this edge to this edge, 23.5. Okay. And then what else is <clears throat> there? We'll go ahead and get this dimension off the top, 13.3. We know the overall width already. We got that. Um, we'll go ahead and get the diameter of this hole. It's about 6.8. Okay, and then that hole, I believe, is just center 2.4, to center, yeah, so this is center in this direction. And then from the back edge, it's going to be a little tricky, but probably about, I'm just going to say nine. Okay. And then we need, we should get from here to here. And that's about 28, I'd say. Yeah, 28. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and I think that's about all the dimensions we need for now. Again, this is <laughs> by no means a pretty drawing. Um, we're just trying to get down on paper what this part actually is in terms of dimensions. It doesn't need to look nice because the CAD model is what's going to actually look nice. All we need is something that we can interpret um, when we're drafting and hopefully we've got all of the correct dimensions here that we're going to need to input into the CAD modeling software. So I'm going to take you back to the computer now and show you the process um, of taking this crude drawing and making it into a 3D model. Okay, so I've got uh, Fusion 360 open here. Now, I'm pretty new to Fusion 360, I'm not going to lie. Um, so this might not be the most ideal way to generate this part, but this is kind of <laughs> using the basic knowledge of this program that I have. I was primarily using Rhino. Um, that was just a, another piece of software that I knew how to use already uh, to make 3D models, but I'm trying to make the jump to Fusion 360. Um, so I'm kind of forcing myself to utilize this software instead. So if you guys have suggestions on how I could better this process in Fusion, please drop those in the comments below. I'm eager to learn as much as possible about how to use this program. So, all right, to start things off, we're gonna go ahead and create a sketch. Um, and then I'm just gonna pick this first plane or the uh, zero point on the y-axis, if you will, or z-axis, I guess, in 3D space. Um, okay, so I'm gonna draw basically the top shell and the bottom shell first. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some lines, and I don't like to start at the origin because things kind of snap to the origin and it gets weird quickly. All right, so this first line we're gonna go Oh, and this is in inches, and we are measuring in millimeters, I think. So, hold on. Document settings, units. Okay, we're gonna change our units to millimeters. Okay, there we go. That's better. And let's create a sketch again. There we go. Back to where we were. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and start over here. We're going to go 28 millimeters in that direction. And then we're going to go ahead and draw another line that is 15, 15.8. Millimeters, so this is the straight up, straight away on our uh, part, and this is kind of where the the uh, curve starts to take place here. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and drop down, and we have a total dimension of 16.5, and then I'm just going to copy these. Sixteen point five negative. Cool. All right, and then I'll just go ahead and take this guy down. Those were two point four. there. I'll do the same from the bottom up here. 2.4 and then 28. Okay. So that is our... Oh, and then we'll connect this in between, obviously. There we go. Okay. So that's our basic rough shape, right? Now we're going to go ahead and round these edges out. 
So this this makes a perfect circle, I believe. So we're a total of 16 and a half, so we're gonna be a radius of 8.25. So come up here to the fillet or fillet. And then we're gonna make this 8.25. And then we'll do the same thing for this side. 8.25, cool. So now we've got our rounded edges there. And then we're going to go ahead and make a circle here. And this circle is 10 millimeters. Okay, so I think this is gonna be our bottom, bottom piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this sketch. And that, that's our bottom of, uh, bottom plan, I guess, if you will. Let's see, first let's, we're gonna go ahead and make an offset plane. We're gonna offset this, the height of the unit, which is 24.8. I just wanna look at this from the front. There we go, so we've got the bottom and then we have this new plane that we're gonna create our sketch on. Okay, so we're gonna create new sketch. There we go, okay. 18. And then the uh, shaft portion is 13.3 long. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and drop down. To there. And then we're gonna go 13.3. another 18, go up 2.4 in 18, come to this guy now, go down 2.4 in 18. And then the last line to connect these two together. Okay, so now we've got the rough shape of the top worked out. And we'll go ahead and round off these corners. 8.25, just like the other one. And this will also be 8.25, cool. Okay, so now we have our two top and bottom piece there. I'll just pan this. I'm going to finish the sketch. And so here you can see the two different pieces. And here you can see that they're elevated or offset from one another by the distance of 24.4 I think was what it was. Okay, so next we're gonna, we gotta bridge this gap in between these pieces, right? So in order to do that, what we're gonna use is the loft tool. So we're gonna go to create, loft, and the loft tool, before we get ahead of ourselves here, we'll take two shapes, basically, and then um, create a surface all around it, or create that shape based on the like top and bottom or left and right or how, whatever orientation your model is. So we're gonna take this loft tool here and then we're gonna select the faces that we want to loft, which are these two. Oops, and we're gonna hit enter after that. And 
there is our lofted figure here. So you can see as I spit around here, that is our basic shape, right? And then the next thing we gotta do now is make it so that this center hole is a um, a slot in this in this part here. So we gotta carve a carve a cylinder out of this slot at the same angle of this loft, basically. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut that slot in. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and create a new sketch here. I'm gonna center or utilize that bottom face for it. I'm gonna go ahead and draw some lines here. First a center line, so I know where to put my circle. I'm gonna change that to a center line. And then I'm gonna draw another line here, and this is gonna be my <clears throat> center point on that center line. So the circle, or the edge distance we're going for is 2.4, and the circle is 10. So we're gonna be 7.4 in length and that's going to be our center. I'm going to get the circle here, 10, okay, and now we can delete that line, we don't need that anymore, okay, and <clears throat> realistically we don't need that line anymore. We are going to need a line to rotate this around so while we're in this view, I'm just going to draw that off the edge here. This is going to be the lowest edge of this once we rotate it and we want this will be the axis that that rotation will take place through. Okay, so I'm just going to switch the view a little bit so you can see what we're doing here. So we're going to select this guy, move, switch this to rotate, and then select this axis here. And then in the front view, you get this little um, cursor wheel here, and this angle here is 25 degrees. So we're gonna lock that in. So now we've rotated that circle 25 degrees down, and then we are going to go ahead and delete that line because we don't need it anymore. We're gonna finish this sketch and then we're going to take this circle and we're going to come to extrude. We're going to change this operation to cut. And then again in the front view, we're going to go ahead and tell this to go 23.5. And then that's going to be negative 23.5, there we go. And you'll see this red shape is what it's gonna cut out effectively. So it's actually not gonna be 23.5 from the center. We're gonna have to do some math for that, huh? <laughs> um, let's see, let's just make it 24.5 for now. And you can see now we have that oops, slot cut in here. This is tough. There we go. As you can see this that slot goes all the way up and through. Oops, wrong button there, okay. So now we've got that guy set. I'm gonna double check that actual dimension there of the depth. I think it might need to be a little longer actually. Um, and then we'll come back and put the hole on this face here and this face for mounting. 
Okay, so after a little triangle math, we have this slot here at the right depth. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and generate the hole on the sides here that will get the nut and bolt through it. So we measured that earlier to be a diameter of 6.8 and it's centered in the vertical and nine millimeters from the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and create another sketch here. I'm gonna use that face. And first thing we'll do is get a center line going. Call that normal center line. And then we'll go ahead and take, this is gonna be, what did we say, nine? And that's gonna be the center of our circle. Oh no, that's the edge of our circle. Oh no, center, okay. Center of our circle. And then this guy is gonna be 6.8. Boom. All right, so we can ditch that, ditch that, ditch that. And this is what we need left in our sketch. So same thing here, we're gonna finish this sketch. We're gonna take this shape here, we're gonna extrude it. We actually got the back face, that's interesting. Um, let's see, let's, we should move that then. Move, uh, let's see, edit sketch. We've got this that guy there. Get this kind of corner view here. I'm gonna take that, we're gonna extrude it this way, all the way through both of those. Doesn't really matter how long it is, just so that we get oh shoot. I'm really bad about hitting control Z. Okay. Just so that we get um you know all the way through both sides. And now we've got our two holes there for the mounting. And so this, I believe, should be our completed part with the slot down in there. You can see top is there. We've got the round front bull nose thing going on. The last thing I will do is we'll go ahead and um, just smooth out these corners a little bit. These guys on the original part are pretty sharp on the bottom side, um, but on the top side, I think we can, we'll just round these out a smidge. So go ahead and get this guy here, and then let's just go like 0.4 there. Do the same thing here. No, 0.4, not 0.04. 0.4, okay. That'll smooth that out a little bit. And then just for funsies, let's do these sides too. 0.4. some of the uh, settings in this program too. They're not my typical CAD setup. Okay, so now those guys are all rounded off. We'll do this one too, just for the hell of it. 0.4, okay, cool. And now those edges aren't quite as rough. You can see it actually bullnosed around the front too, which is totally fine. 
That'll be good right, regardless. And let's see, this goes like this. Yeah, none of these other edges are going to come in contact with any fat. Actually, this bottom edge does come in contact with fabric, so let's let's just do that too. Let's see. There we go. Point four. Oops. What did I do? Point four. There we go. I think this is now officially our completed part. So we've got all the edges rounded off a little bit, got our slot, got our hole for mounting. I think it looks pretty good relative to the one that's broken. Um, this, like I said, is for a pop-up canopy tent. Um, so it is going to be kind of out in the heat and it is under stress by the nature of the way the part is used. Um, so I think I'm gonna print this out of ABS. And I think, let's see, this is a 25 degree angle. So probably print it upside down is what I'm thinking. And the printer should be able to handle this um, angle here okay without any supports. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try to snap it in the printer, but that is how we take a broken or a part that you need to duplicate, whatever it may be, from the real world. We transferred it to our quick paper sketch and then went ahead and modeled it completely in Fusion here. Um, Again, I apologize if that was a little painful to watch me model this. Uh, I am getting better, but this is like the third model I've done in Fusion, so bear with me as I uh, attempt to hone my skills a little bit more in this program. Alrighty, so the print finished up, and I've got them here for you guys to check out. This is the new part that we made. This is the old part here, and you can see just how similar they are. There are a couple of, you know, dimensions where we're a little off. If it was a big deal and it needed to be absolutely perfect, I would go back and adjust some stuff in the CAD drawing. Um, but for the purpose that this particular part is serving, this, you know, these small deviations are going to be fine. No one's ever going to notice. Um, and it's a whole heck of a lot better than having a broken part that's, you know, not functional at all. So, yeah, this here is the um, little rod that goes in there. You can see this has actually got a little bit of play to it in the old one. This one, it fits nice and snug. And, <clears throat> yeah, everything came out really well. I'm pretty happy with it. It feels pretty sturdy. Um, I did, I was able to print it, um, on its top, I guess, if you will. So this, this face down and came out fine, handled the overhang just fine. Um, yeah, no supports required. Overall, really pleased with the, I don't know what it'd take, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes of modeling. Um. I think it was a 45 minute print. I printed it 75% infill, trying to make it as strong as possible. Um, and it feels, it's, it's much more sturdy than the part that it replaced. Um, even, you know, maybe this was more sturdy <laughs> when it wasn't broken, but uh, it, it just, it feels a little more robust. So anyway, that's the finished product and that, is going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys found that insightful, learned something new. Like I said, if you have tips and tricks for Fusion 360, I'm 
totally game for hearing those trying to learn that program right now so if you have them drop them in the comments below if this video was helpful give us a like subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one thanks everyone